Hello, today I'm going to be reviewing the latest mid-tower case from Cougar, the MX600 RGB, which is available from today in both black and white, with an MSRP of $129. US So should this be our next case, let's take a closer look. To remove the tempered glass side panel, it's just a simple matter of tilting the panel out from the top, and then it can be lifted away. If we take a closer look at the other side panel, you'll notice there's perforated area down at the bottom, and that is going to give the optional fans on the power supply shroud a source of intake. This panel is removed in exactly the same way as the tempered glass panel, tilted out from the top and left away. And if we take a look at the back of the panel, you'll notice we've got a magnetic dust filter over the perforated area. We've got an additional area of perforation down below the tempered glass side panel. If we take a look at the back of this panel, you'll notice there's an additional dust filter, although it doesn't seem to be removable. The case's front panel is removable. It's just a simple matter of tilting it out from the top and lifting it up and away. Behind this, we've got a full length dust filter, which can simply be pulled out from the top and you are able to remove it with the front panel in place. At the front of the case, Cougar have pre-installed three 140mm PWM ARGB fans. They are on a removable bracket. There's a thumb screw in the main body of the case that you need to remove. And then you're simply able to press the two buttons down on the front to free up the front fan stroke radiator bracket. It can then simply be tilted out and lifted away. And you do have the option of turning this bracket round and installing it the opposite way round. Alternatively, if you prefer, you can mount up to three 120mm fans or up to a 360 or 280mm radiator at the front. Take a look at our case's front I.O. We've got a power button. We've got a button to control the case's built-in ARGB controller. We've got two USB Type-A, a single Type-C port and a combined headphone and microphone jack. On the top of the case, we've got a magnetic dust filter, which can simply be pulled away. In terms of fan and radiator mount on the top of the case, it's exactly the same as the front. Up to three 140mm fans, or up to a 360 or 280mm radiator. The case's top panel is removable. There's four screws on the side of the case and one at the back, which you need to remove, and the panel can simply be pulled forward, tilted up and lifted away. At the rear of the case, we've got a single 120mm ARGB PWM fan pre-installed, but if you prefer, you can mount up to a 140mm fan or radiator. As already mentioned, you are able to mount fans and radiators on the power supply stride. It's up to two 120mm fans or up to a 240mm radiator. Rather than use long radiator screws to screw the fans in from the top, Cougar have got a removable fan stroke radiator bracket. It's held on with one screw at the back. You're then going to be able to pull the bracket forward and lift it up to remove it. This means you're going to be able to use standard screws to secure your fans and radiators to the bracket before reinstalling the bracket in the case. In terms of motherboard support, the case supports motherboards up to EATX in size and you want to go with the CPU or killer, the maximum height supported is 180mm. We've got a really nice cable cover bracket over to the right hand side of the motherboard. It's in the right place if you want to go with a standard ATX motherboard. Although you want to go with an EATX motherboard, you simply need to loosen the four screws on the back of the case. And this is then going to allow you to slide the cable cover bracket towards the front of the case. In terms of graphics card support, the case has eight horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets at the rear of the case. And it will support graphics cards up to a maximum length of 400 millimeters. Your graphics card should be really well supported in the case with the included GPU support bracket. If you prefer, you are able to mount your graphics card vertically using the included bracket. Although it is important to mention that the required riser cable isn't included with the case. At the bottom of the case, we've got a tray style dust filter, which can simply be pulled out from the back for cleaning. Moving into the rear compartment, we've got a magnetically attached cable cover door, which after opening it can simply be lifted up to remove it. It's good to see that we've got plenty of cable cutouts in all the right places and we've got rubber grommets over the two main cutouts to the right hand side of the motherboard. Although you're unlikely to get much of a benefit from these because they are going to be covered over by the cable cover bracket on the front. It's great to see we've got a large central cable raceway and plenty of velcro cable straps. Cable routing space also looks to be pretty good. All four of our pre-installed case fans are connected up to the case's built-in ARGB and PWM fan hub meaning that we've got two spare PWM connectors and two spare ARGB connectors. And it's great to see that the hub has motherboard sync for both PWM and ARGB. We've got two dedicated two and a half inch drive mounting brackets behind the motherboard tray and a hard drive cage down at the bottom of the case. 
In the hard drive tray itself, you're going to be able to mount either a 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drive, while you can mount an additional 2.5 inch drive on top of the hard drive cage. The hard drive cage is movable and removable. There's four screws at the bottom of the case which you need to loosen, and you're able to slide it further towards the front or the back of the case, or it can be removed altogether. The case is compatible with full-sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 180 millimeters. Although as there's no removable power supply bracket, you are going to have to install your power supply in from the side before securing it at the back. It's also really nice to see that the case comes with the screws in their own individual compartments in a really nice storage box. So what I want to do now is give you a look at the build I put together in the case. Take a look at the temperatures are Ryzen 9 7900X being cooled with a 280mm AIO at the top set to exhaust, idled at 45 degrees and reached a maximum of 89 degrees during a 10 minute idle 64 stability test. Our ROG Strix RTX 4080 idled at 28 degrees and reached a maximum of 63 degrees during the stability test. We had an average noise level of 38 decibels at idle and 47 decibels under load. So in terms of building in the case, it is a pretty large case, it's well thought out, your fans are all pre-installed and connected up to the ARGB hub, so I didn't really run into an awful lot of difficulties. There was maybe only two areas where I had to redo things. The first was when I tried to install the AIO at the top, the first time I did it, I installed it with washers and screws. Problem with that was the dust filter at the top then was sitting up. Um, removing the washers, the dust filter at the top set down nice and smoothly. So if your AIO does come with washers on it, I would probably leave these out. Second thing to mention is I struggled a little bit to install my power supply with the hard drive cage in place. However, after moving the hard drive cage all the way to the front of the case, I was able to just about get the power supply fitted in place. So my advice is, I think if you are planning on building this case without installing any drives in the drive tray at the bottom, I probably would go ahead and remove the hard drive cage. The final thing to mention is check your fan hub to make sure your PWM connectors, you've at least got one of them plugged into the white connector at the top of the hub. When I opened my case, they were all plugged in down at the bottom and that was due to cable length not reaching the top. But it is important that at least one of those fans is plugged into that white cable at the top to allow your motherboard to be able to read the fan speeds. So moving on to the things I liked about the case, um, in terms of the looks, I think it's a good looking case and build quality was pretty good throughout the case. In terms of features, I think you're getting quite a lot in the case. You're getting um, four good PWM fans and they actually look pretty good. You're getting a built-in PWM fan hub, an ARGB hub with motherboard sync. In terms of the fan brackets, it's nice to have the removal bracket at the front of the case, although I imagine most people are just going to leave the pre-installed fans there and they're never actually going to use that bracket. Although the bracket at the bottom does seem pretty good and it seems a much better solution than the long radiator screws that most cases make use of when installing fans on the power supply shroud. Um, and Cougar have really set the case up for these bottom fans with the perforated areas on both sides of the case. I also really like the angle panel at the front of the case which directed all the airflow coming in from the front up towards the graphics card. I thought the cable cover bracket at the front did an excellent job of hiding all the cables plugging into the right hand side of the motherboard and I didn't have any difficulty fitting the cables through. And in terms of cable management at the back, it was really well catered for with a pre-installed Velcro cable straps all the way around the case. So in terms of things I didn't like about the case, the first thing that really annoyed me about this case was there was a little sticker stuck to the inside of the temper glass panel. And this was actually on the inside of the protective film. So you remove the protective film and there was still a little sticker there. 
I didn't show this on camera, but once I peeled the sticker off, there was lots of adhesive left on the inside of the tempered glass panel that took me a long time to clean off. So really this little sticker should be stuck to the protective film. You pull the film off and then there's nothing left on the tempered glass panel. Also, I wasn't a big fan of having the rubber grommets behind the cable covered bracket. One, because you weren't gonna be able to see them. And actually they kept popping off when I was trying to pass the cables through them. So they were serving no purpose, but making it a little bit more awkward to pass the cables through. I think the included case fans look great, but with three 140 millimeter fans included at the front, I really wish the fan at the rear had been a 140 millimeter fan as well. But it's great to see that it does have RGB on it and it wasn't a plain black fan. Other things that I think could be improved on, the front panel connectors were all separate cables and it'd be nice if they were combined into a single cable that could be plugged directly into the front panel connector on the motherboard. I found installing the power supply really difficult in this case with the hard drive cage in its default position. I couldn't actually install a relatively small power supply with the cables already plugged into it. Um, and I do think if there was a removable power supply bracket at the back allowing you to install your power supply directly from the back, this process would be much easier. Another thing I wasn't a big fan of was the magnetic cable covered door. I know some other cases such as the LAN could have done something similar and I really didn't like them in this case as well. I didn't use any cable extensions in this build and I did a pretty good job of managing the cables into that central cable raceway. But despite this, I wasn't able to get that cable covered door fully closed so that the magnets would hold it closed. And I much prefer having some thumb screws that will close these doors so when the cables are quite bulky, you're still able to get the door closed at the end. Although despite the door sitting slightly open, I still was able to put the side panel back on. So we've now reached a stage in the review where I'm going to tell you should you go out and pick up this case. Now at 130 US dollars, my first impressions were that this case is probably a little bit expensive for what it offers. Um, particularly when you've got cases like the Fantex NV5 on sale in the UK for £85. And the Lian Li O11 Dynamic Evo is on sale for £180. So assuming that you this goes on sale for a similar price in pounds, for £45 more, you could have the O11 Dynamic Evo. Now the problem with those other cases is they might seem like a good offer at the start, but once you price up the fans that you're going to cost you to put into those cases, they're going to be significantly more expensive. And actually the price that you're paying for this case actually seems like better value for money. So I think it really depends whether you really like the aesthetics of this case. If you do, you're going to have a really easy time building in it. You've got good fans installed, they're all already connected up for you, and building is going to be really straightforward and you're not going to have to spend an extra load of money on fans. The other thing, the cable cover bracket does a great job of hiding your cables. With the I.O. at the top, you can see the cables plugging into the top of the motherboard. So you're going to save yourself some money on some cable extensions as well. Also, if you want to go with a vertical GPU, you've got the included bracket, so all you're going to have to pick up is the riser cable. So I think really it depends on how you want to build in the case. If you're wanting to simply use the case as it is, install your motherboard without having to buy any extra fans, I probably think this case is going to be a pretty reasonable buy, particularly if you can find it a little bit cheaper than MSRP. So if you like this case, the look of it, I can definitely recommend it. And if you do want to do a build in the case, I've already made a full step-by-step -step build guide in it. And I'll put a link to that video in the description so you can go ahead and check it out. If you have enjoyed this review, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.